Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Jay's Office Hours. This week I blogged on my website, which is www.jaywells.com, about the topic of craft books. And by that I mean uh, books about the craft of writing that I have read and enjoyed and have recommended to lots of people. Um, and there's about six books on the list and you can go check it out after you watch the video. Um, and it's by no means an exhaustive list. I read a lot of craft books and I have learned something from all of them. These are just six that I think don't get as much attention because um, you kind of see the same books on list after list after list and I wanted to avoid that. So go check that out. But the reason I bring it up now is that um, we hear a lot when we're learning to write about how important reading is. And it certainly is extremely important. And everybody's read um, On Writing by Stephen King. I'm sure you have, or at least have heard of it. And there's a famous quote in that book about um, if you don't read, if you don't have time to read, you don't have the time to become an author. I'm horribly misquoting that. But the idea is the same. Um, but what Stephen King doesn't talk about, and I think it gets missed a lot, by new writers is they simply think, well, I read a lot, so, you know, I'm fine. The problem is, is that a lot of people don't read like writers. They read like readers. You know, most of us do start out as people who just like to read. And then we think, hey, I have stories to tell. Maybe I could do that too. But there's a difference between reading for pleasure and that is sort of, you know, consuming a story, um, as entertainment versus reading a story uh, with the with the goal of learning from it, um, and the process of story is something that in academic circles is called close reading. It might be called something else other places, but that's the way I learned it. Um, and close reading is when you uh, read to understand the structure of the story and how words are used and how the author uses different techniques and tools to create effect and theme and um, emotion and all sorts of all the things that authors have to do. So today I'm going to talk about how to close read and some techniques you can use to start making your reading um, help your writing get better a little more quickly. Um, and I get in a lot of trouble because I think that books are supposed to be interactive, the print books. Um, when I read, I always have a pen or a pencil in my hand. Um, if, it's a, if it's like a really nice hardcover edition, maybe I'll use a post-it note or little flags to mark passages that are important. But I do kind of freely write in my books because I want to really have that hands-on um, approach of, of, you know, writing on the page and interacting with the words themselves. Not everybody can do that. I understand that books are precious and maybe you don't want to write in your books, but post-its and stickers and things like that work great too. The point is, is that as you're reading, you really want to be marking things that you find interesting or that make you stop and say, hmm, I wonder why they did it that way, or maybe I would have done it a different way, or if there's a really great description of something. Just start paying attention to how the authors you read are putting stories together. Um, it's a little harder in ebook format to do this, but you can certainly highlight and leave notes for yourself. I find that, um, you know, the process of having to push all the buttons and find the right highlight and all of that is a little too disruptive. So I prefer print when I'm reading um, closely. I do read ebook a lot just um, for casual reading because I find that it's an easier um, format for me to casually read a book and I don't analyze it as much. But if I'm, if I'm studying something, it tends to be print. Um, and if you want to get better at a certain like element of writing, like maybe you want to um, learn how to do descriptions better, or you've never written in first person and you want to learn how first person works, then you need to do what my mentor at my MFA program, Timmons Assayas, calls a field recon. And what you do is you get 5, 10, 20 examples 
of the thing that you're trying to learn. So if you're, let's say you're trying to learn first person, you get 10 books written in first person by authors who do it very well. It's okay if they don't do it well as well, because then you can see why certain things don't work and read them just to see how they handle the point of view. You know, there's a lot of issues that come up when you choose one point of view over another. For example, if you're writing first person, that character has to be in all of the major scenes. So if you have action that's happening off screen, like how do you handle that? We'll see how authors who do it well handle it. If you want to get better at description, um, read authors who are famous for that. If you want to learn how to plot within your genre using the conventions of your genre, read 10, 10 20 or more examples in that genre and pay attention to how they structure the story. You don't have to have an MFA or a college degree or a high school degree. You don't even have to graduate from elementary school to be a writer. The beauty of it is that you can teach yourself writing by studying other writers. And the way that you do that is you learn how to deconstruct stories when you read them. It is a skill that will serve you your entire career as a writer. And I know professional writers who don't do this. They're kind of natural storytellers who've kind of stumbled into what works for them. But, you know, if they have to start writing a new genre and they came to me and said, what should I do if I want to move, say, from science fiction to mysteries? I would say, here's a list of books. Go read them. Figure out how they work. Understand how they're structured. And then start thinking about writing mystery. Um, another great trick is to use audiobooks. Um, there's a, uh, audiobooks are great for helping you learn um, sort of narrative rhythm and cadence uh, because when you're hearing the words read to you, you kind of are internalizing the beats, the meter of the sentences. You know, like when you studied poetry in high school, you learned about iambic pentameter and the sonnets and things like that. Well, that exists in novels, too. And the best writers know how to use that rhythm and cadence to their advantage to help underscore certain emotions or themes, um, to ramp up tension. And audiobooks are great for helping you hear how that's done. And what I would do, like right now I'm listening to um, Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. And he is a master at wordcraft. So what I'm doing is I'm listening to the story now, and then I will go back and look at the print book and see and see on page how they're structured. Because I am interested in writing prettier sentences. I don't want to write like Ray Bradbury, but I want to learn how he's so good at it so that then I can take those techniques and put my own voice on it. Um, so I would suggest to you that if you want to get better at writing, you just need to read more, but you need to read like a writer. You have to understand, I mean, this is a really an elegant analogy, but you have to understand how the sausage is made. Now, the fallback of that is that initially, when you start doing this, it will be very hard to read for pleasure because you will be reading every book critically. Eventually, after you use it for a while and you kind of master the techniques of doing this, you can sort of learn to turn it on and off if you want to. If I'm on vacation, I can sit down and turn off that side of it and just lose myself in a good book. But I am a much pickier reader. I tend not to give books as much of a chance as I used to. If they don't hook me within the first 50 pages, I'll set it aside. Um, I also have kind of a stable of authors who are my go-to authors who I know will not disappoint me. Um, so I am a pickier reader. But I also, what technique of writing I want to learn how to do, I can teach myself by going and reading people who are already doing it. So that's just a great trick for you. Um, I hope that if you are working on your craft, um, in, in addition to reading the fiction, you'll go check out my blog post on great craft books. Um, included in that is a book on writing poetry, which can help you with your cadence and rhythm. Um, there's books on... Um, the writing life and how to survive it. There's books on specific um, elements of the craft. There's a real interesting selection. So I hope you'll check it out. If you have questions for me about writing, be sure and leave them in comments and I'll address them in a future episode. And as always, I hope you'll check out my website at www.jwells.com. Thanks and happy writing.